What's up guys, Shane here from 3 Deck 3D Printing, and today we're gonna to talk about the lessons learned from the Prusa i3 Mark III S upgrade and the MMU 2S upgrade that I recently did. Welcome back guys. So as I said recently, I did a stream of the upgrade for my Mark III, and that is the MK3S or MK3 upgrade to the S version, which is their newest one, and the MMU2 to the S, which FYI, for the MMU, it is nothing changed whatsoever except a new version of firmware, which came out like a few months ago, but I was not running it. So I did flash that onto it uh, from when I got it, when I originally built it to now, firmware had updated. So I did put the new firmware on that, but other than that, nothing changed with that whatsoever. Everything was on the extruder of the Mark III. So it's just basically a rebuild. And that took me about two hours, which is what I figured. And then I troubleshot for about 45 minutes because it wasn't working. And there were several things that I was missing out and I didn't quite understand why they were messing up. Now, the very first thing was someone pointed out in the stream that I was using the wrong piece for the idler, which is now on this orange right here. I was using a standard one which was this one here. This is the one that I had used originally. This is for the non, uh, was, this is for the standard Mark III S without the MMU-2 on it. So I was using the wrong one. And the reason why it's wrong is because you'll see this arm right here. This actually, when you put a piece of filament in, so I will simulate that with a screwdriver, and what it does is, you're gonna watch this top part up here. I don't know if you can see it. I'm, it's as close as I can get my camera at the moment. But when I do this, it pushes in, and this pushes out. That's just the tension on the idler bearing. And when it does that, it then comes in, to co it goes in between the contacts of the uh, optical sensor, the IR sensor, they're calling it. And that is what says, hey, there's filament in here. That's what it does. It doesn't actually trigger on the filament it triggers on this arm. So I had to reprint this this morning and I was able to get that done. I mean, this stream is literally right after I did that last one. So this desk is exactly the same loud as I was last night when I did that uh, because I just continued on throughout the next day, which today is Sunday and I'm working on it. So, so yeah, so that was one of the main things. So I had to reprint that. I thought it was, the one little, there is a, whatever this little piece is, I don't know what this is, it's got the little pointy end on it. This did have the ball in it, but they got rid of that version, because uh, that was a mechanical sensor, so I went to this version here. Uh, I thought this might be the problem, so I went ahead and printed it in orange, just like they had in the guide, because I have a roll of the Prusament uh, PETG right here that I bought just in case I wanted to reprint any of these parts in the same color. I wanted to use their same filament. It's not Prusament, I'm sorry. It's just the Prusa orange PETG. So I went ahead and reprinted this and I printed that and I did print the, uh, the fan shroud in orange as well since I already had the filament loaded. So I just have to go ahead and uh, take that piece off and put this one on. I just, just because I want it on there and I like the contrasting colors on the extruder. So that was one of the things that was messed up there. The thing that I found that out, that was an after thing that I found out. The bigger thing that I found out or a problem was with the actual MMU2. And the, the problem here was at first my own fault. So when, I, when you take apart the control box in here, you have to take out a lot of connectors, rewire everything, and then put everything back in. That caused me to actually remove the main power connector for the MMU2. I didn't realize that. So I'm troubleshooting, I couldn't even figure out, it wouldn't even boot, like there's no lights on it, nothing was happening, like what in the world is going on? So then I went ahead and looked inside, it wasn't even connected, I'm like Phew. okay. So I seated it, turned it on, still nothing. I mean, absolute crickets from it. Light came on, but it wouldn't actually do anything. So I started searching, I was asking online, someone said like check your connectors, I'm like I did already, I'm pretty sure I connected that. Uh, I reseated it, rebooted, didn't happen, reseated it, rebooted, and then magically this started communicating with the printer. So. I don't know what's going on with that connector. This version is my older, this is the original one that I bought. Uh, this one doesn't have the extra 
retention clip that goes in there to kind of keep those connectors tighter. So I think I'm gonna go print that while I have the, the orange PTG loaded because it's easier to see in there as well if it's a different color than black and that you, way you know it's in there. So I might print that and put that in this one and see if that helps uh, kind of keep those connectors seated properly and lessen the issues with this. But since doing that, I did do a couple prints that I do would like I would like to show you um, because they're beautiful and they came out just great. All right, so here is just a simple Benji. This is the sample model that comes on the printer. I'd already loaded in filament one, so it just started printing right away because I already loaded it. It was a little bit hot using the US Monofilaments PLA. This is their HH PLA, their high heat. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this maroon turned out beautifully. It's a really nice one. Again, a little bit of wispies on it, but other than that, really, really nice. And I recently found this uh, gem formation online. I printed it on my SLA printer. I figured, oh, you know what? Let me let me print it out on this just so I can add it to the Thingiverse page as a make. And uh, yeah, so that also turned out just fantastic. Looks absolutely great. A little stringy again, just from being a little too hot, but it stuck to the build plate, no problems. And that's really good. Okay. Now this, the other, the other main thing I want to talk about was this tall piece right here. This is called the chimney. There are two screws in it. The front screw is actually what secures this entire piece here to the extruder body. What you have to do is you have to basically, I had to pull this out. So this PTF tube needs to come out. Okay get a screwdriver, put it in there until that depresses. And this is now pressed in. And this came out a little bit. Now in, in the actual LCD, you'll be able to go to sensor status and look at, it'll be zero one. So right now, now that this is pushed in, that sensor should be one, it should be activated. If it's not, you then need to take a hex and loosen this front bolt and slide this entire chimney back and forth. I mean, go. you're gonna to wanna to go more that way if it's not activating. If you pull this out and it's activating right now with nothing in there, you wanna pull it more to the left. If you put this in and it is still not activated, you wanna push this to the right. That's when you're looking straight at the printer which way you want it to go. So that is how you adjust this piece. There's actually a Prusa article on it, but I had problems finding it because I was looking for um, optical sensor when Prusa calls it the IR sensor. It probably would help if they would update their metadata to add optical sensor because technically it is an optical sensor, I guess. It's not a physical sensor. I think that they should add that in there so that people like me can find the data that they have because I couldn't find it for the life of me just because I was looking for the wrong information. It's just not there. It's not called an sensor, it's called an IR sensor. So that was my main issue with getting that like basically aligned properly. And I did do also a, I did make one other change. I will tell you back. One other change on the MMU2 and it is on the carriage. So the change I made is on this carriage and on the back of it, is where the filament goes through the Bowden tube and then comes up and goes through here and then comes out the filament tube and then goes down into the extruder. On the back side of this, the hole is just too small. It, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not flanged at all. So it's very narrow, but if you widen it a little bit, it gives your filament a better chance to wiggle its way through there when coming through. So I literally just took, um, an exacto knife put it in there and just kind of carved around the most sides of it you can't get to the top side too much because that's where the block of filament is but just kind of carve around it just kind of giving it that more tapered angle so instead of being near, straight you're kind of just flaring it out a little bit and that way it gives the filament a greater avenue to get in it still eventually gets down to where it has to be but it gives it a better chance to get in there and especially if it has a little extra wisp on it that happens to go some way it might it might want to like screw off to one side but this it seemed to be doing better i'm going to do an mmu test once i wrap this video up i'm going to put this back on the shelf hook it back up to the rep box with a couple colors of filaments and i'm going to go ahead and do some more testing with it so i'm going to just put five random filaments on there, do that bearing again, do a MOI, maybe a couple other uh, multi-material prints and just see what happens to make sure that all the changes that I've made actually work. So I mean, other than those issues, 
it's going great now, but again, it took me, you know, a good few hours to search on the internet, ask the Prusa support group on Facebook for some answers. And again, the few people that replied did point me in the right direction and kind of got me going there. So I was happy to finally get this up and running properly. And now I know what to expect. Well, mostly what to expect when I get the, I also ordered a Mark III S upgrade kit for my clone. Um, just because I wanted to get the extra parts from them and they do use other parts in there and I wanted to get the sensor. So it was worth the 20 bucks to buy it from Prusa. I'm gonna go ahead and print out all the parts that I needed from this. I'll print out for that one. That one does not have an MMU system on it and I don't think I'll ever put one on there because I don't need two. I also don't have space for them. Uh, maybe if I got rid of a bunch of printers and I got another rep box, I might do a DIY uh, or clone of the MMU2 and try that out, but I don't know um, if I'll end up ever doing that. But either way, I want to get that upgraded to the MK3S as well, and that way they're both at least on the same level, because it does print really good, but I just want to get it upgraded. So I hope if any of you are out there that did this upgrade and have run into problems, I do hope this video helped you out because again, it took me quite a while to finally get to this point that it's working. I am so happy that it is so I can get back to printing with it, but I really do hope it helped you out. And if it did, please give the video a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video at all, thumbs down. Talk in the comments down below. Either way, I'd love to hear from you guys what you thought. If you guys want to support me for what I do, become a patron. Down below is a Patreon link. Donate a dollar more and get you access to my Patreon feed. Two dollars gets you a sticker. And the higher tiers give you a little bit more as well. So go down there, check that out. And all the money that I get from there, I directly put back into my channel. So I thank you everyone there uh, for helping me out. Otherwise, you can donate. There's some one-time links down below. And there's a bunch of fill links down there as well. Go ahead and check those out. Do some purchases through there or send me a couple bucks. I appreciate it. Uh, and if you guys just watch the video, you're awesome too. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Until next time, happy printing.